In statistics, ordinary least squares or linear least squares is a method for estimating the unknown parameters in a linear regression model, with the goal of minimizing the differences between the observed responses in some arbitrary data set and the responses predicted by the linear approximation of the data. The resulting estimator can be expressed by a simple formula, especially in the case of a single regressor on the right-hand side. The OLS estimator is consistent when the regressors are exogenous and there is no perfect multipolinearity, and optimal in the class of linear unbiased estimators when the errors are homocedastic and serially uncorrelated. Under these conditions, the method of OLS provides minimum variance mean unbiased estimation when the errors have finite variances. Under the additional assumption that the errors be normally distributed, OLS is the maximum likelihood estimator. OLS is used in economics, political science and electrical engineering, among many areas of application. The multifractional order estimator is an expanded version of OLS. Linear model. Suppose the data consists of n observations, yi, xi, ni equals 1. Each observation includes a scalar response yi in a vector of p predictor xi. In a linear regression model the response variable is a linear function of the regressors, where beta is a p times 1 vector of unknown parameters, epsilon i's are unobserved scalar random variables which account for the discrepancy between the actually observed responses yi and the predicted outcomes xi t beta and t denotes matrix transpose, so that x t beta is the dot product between the vectors x and beta. This model can also be written in matrix notation as where y and epsilon are n times 1 vectors, and x is an n times p matrix of regresses, which is also sometimes called the design matrix. As a rule, the constant term is always included in the set of regresses x, say, by taking xi 1 equals 1 for all i equals 1, n. The coefficient beta 1 corresponding to this regressor is called the intercept. There may be some relationship between the regressors. For instance, the third regressor may be the square of the second regressor. In this case we have a quadratic model in the second regressor. But this is still considered a linear model because it is linear in the beta s. Assumptions There are several different frameworks in which the linear regression model can be cast in order to make the OLS technique applicable. Each of these settings produces the same formulas and same results. The only difference is the interpretation and the assumptions which have to be imposed in order for the method to give meaningful results. The choice of the applicable framework depends mostly on the nature of data in hand and on the inference task which has to be performed. One of the lines of difference in interpretation is whether to treat the regresses as random variables or as predefined constants. In the first case the regresses shear random and sampled together with the ease from some population, as in an observational study. This approach allows for more natural study of the asymptotic properties of the estimators. In the other interpretation, the regresses x are treated as known constants set by a design, and y is sampled conditionally on the values of x's in an experiment. For practical purposes, this distinction is often unimportant, since estimation and inference is carried out while conditioning on x. All results stated in this article are within the random design framework. The primary assumption of OLS is that there are zero or negligible errors in the independent variable. Since this method only attempts to minimize the mean squared error in the dependent variable, Classical linear regression model The classical model focuses on the finite sample estimation and inference, meaning that the number of observations n is fixed. This contrasts with the other approaches, which study the asymptotic behavior of OLS, and in which the number of observations is allowed to grow to infinity. Correct specification The linear functional form is correctly specified. Strict exogeneity 
the errors in the regression should have conditional mean zero. The immediate consequence of the exogeneity assumption is that the errors have mean zero, e epsilon equals zero, and that the regresses are uncorrelated with the errors, e x t epsilon equals zero. The exogeneity assumption is critical for the old theory. If it holds then the regressive variables are called exogenous. If it doesn't, then those regresses that are correlated with the error term are called endogenous, and then the OLS estimates become invalid. In such case the method of instrumental variables may be used to carry out inference. No linear dependence. The regresses in X must all be linearly independent. Mathematically it means that the matrix X must have full column rank almost surely. Usually, it is also assumed that the regresses have finite moments up to at least second. In such case the matrix QXX equals E X T X N will be finite and positive semi-definite. When this assumption is violated the regresses are called linearly dependent or perfectly multipolinear. In such case the value of the regression coefficient beta cannot be learned, although prediction of y values is still possible for new values of the regresses that lie in the same linearly dependent subspace. Spherical errors where n is an n times n identity matrix, and sigma 2 is a parameter which determines the variance of each observation. This sigma 2 is considered a nuisance parameter in the model, although usually it is also estimated. If this assumption is violated then the OLS estimates are still valid, but no longer efficient. It is customary to split this assumption into two parts. Homoscedasticity E epsilon I2 X equals sigma 2, which means that the error term has the same variance sigma 2 in each observation. When this requirement is violated this is called heteroscedasticity. In such case a more efficient estimator would be weighted least squares. If the errors have infinite variance then the OLS estimates will also have infinite variance. In this case, robust estimation techniques are recommended. No autocorrelation. The errors are uncorrelated between observations. E epsilon I epsilon J X equals zero for I J. This assumption may be violated in the context of time series data, panel data, cluster samples, hierarchical data, repeated measures data, longitudinal data, and other data with dependencies. In such cases generalized least squares provides a better alternative than the OLS. Another expression for autocorrelation is serial correlation. Normality. It is sometimes additionally assumed that the errors have normal distribution conditional on the regresses. This assumption is not needed for the validity of the OLS method. Although certain additional finite sample properties can be established in case when it does. Also when the errors are normal, the OLS estimator is equivalent to the maximum likelihood estimator, and therefore it is asymptotically efficient in the class of all regular estimators. Independent and identically distributed in some applications, especially with cross-sectional data, an additional assumption is imposed that all observations are independent and identically distributed. This means that all observations are taken from a random sample which makes all the assumptions listed earlier simpler and easier to interpret. Also this framework allows one to state asymptotic results, which are understood as a theoretical possibility of fetching new independent observations from the data generating process. The list of assumptions in this case is ID observations is independent from and has the same distribution as for all ij no perfect multipolinearity qxx equals e she xit is a positive definite matrix exogeneity e epsilon i she equals zero homoscedasticity var epsilon i she equals sigma two Time series model the stochastic process Xi Yi is stationary and ergodic. The regresses are predetermined. E Xi epsilon I equals zero for all I equals one N. The P times P matrix QXX equals E Xi XIT is of full rank and hence positive definite. 
Chi epsilon i is a martingale difference sequence, with a finite matrix of second moments, qxx epsilon squared equals e epsilon i to chi x i t. Estimation. Suppose b is of candidate value for the parameter beta, the quantity e minus x i t b, called the residual for the i t h observation, measures the vertical distance between the data point and the hyperplane y equals x t b, and thus assesses the degree of fit between the actual data and the model. The sum of squared residuals or residual sum of squares is a measure of the overall model fit where T denotes the matrix transpose. The value of B which minimizes this sum is called the OLS estimator for beta. The function S is quadratic in B with positive definite Hessian and therefore this function possesses a unique global minimum at which can be given by the explicit formula proof or equivalently in matrix form. After we have estimated beta, the fitted values from the regression will be where p equals x minus 1 x t is the projection matrix onto the space spanned by the columns of x. This matrix P is also sometimes called the hat matrix because it puts a hat onto the variable Y. Another matrix closely related to P is the annihilator matrix M equals in minus P. This is a projection matrix onto the space orthogonal to X. Both matrices P and M are symmetric and idempotent, and relate to the data matrix X via identities Px equals X and Mx equals 0. Matrix M creates the residuals from the regression. Using these residuals we can estimate the value of sigma 2. The numerator, N minus P, is the statistical degrees of freedom. The first quantity, S2, is the OLS estimate for sigma 2, whereas the second is the MLE estimate for sigma 2. The two estimators are quite similar in large samples. The first one is always unbiased, while the second is biased but minimizes the mean squared error of the estimator. In practice S2 is used more often, since it is more convenient for the hypothesis testing. The square root of S2 is called the standard error of the regression, or standard error of the equation. It is common to assess the goodness of fit of the OLS regression by comparing how much the initial variation in the sample can be reduced by regressing onto x. The coefficient of determination R2 is defined as a ratio of explained variance to the total variance of the dependent variable y, where TSS is the total sum of squares for the dependent variable L equals a minus 11 T n and 1 is an n times 1 vector of 1s. In order for R2 to be meaningful, the matrix X of data on regresses must contain a column vector of 1s to represent the constant whose coefficient is the regression intercept. In that case, R2 will always be a number between 0 and 1, with values close to 1 indicating a good degree of fit. The variance in the prediction of the independent variable as a function of the dependent variable is given in polynomial least squares simple regression model if the data matrix X contains only two variables a constant and a scalar regresso she, then this is called the simple regression model. This case is often considered in the beginner statistics classes, as it provides much simpler formulas even suitable for manual calculation. The parameters are commonly denoted as the least squares estimates in this case are given by simple formulas where is the variance of x. Alternative derivations in the previous section the least squares estimator was obtained as a value that minimizes the sum of squared residuals of the model. However it is also possible to derive the same estimator from other approaches. In all cases the formula for Rolls estimator remains the same. Carat beta equals minus 1 x t y. The only difference is in how we interpret this result. Assuming the system cannot be solved exactly. We are looking for a solution that could provide the smallest discrepancy between the right and left hand sides. In other words, we are looking for the solution that satisfies where is the standard L2 norm in the n-dimensional Euclidean space Rn. The predicted quantity x beta is just a certain linear combination of the vectors of regresses. 
The Ohl's estimator in this case can be interpreted as the coefficients of vector decomposition of caret y equals py along the basis of x. Another way of looking at it is to consider the regression line to be a weighted average of the lines passing through the combination of any two points in the data set. Although this way of calculation is more computationally expensive, it provides a better intuition on Ohl's. Maximum likelihood The Ohl's estimator is identical to the maximum likelihood estimator under the normality assumption for the error terms. Proof This normality assumption has historical importance, as it provided the basis for the early work in linear regression analysis by Ewell and Pearson. From the properties of MLE, we can infer that the Ohl's estimator is asymptotically efficient if the normality assumption is satisfied. Generalized method of moments in DIID case the Ohl's estimator can also be viewed as a GMM estimator arising from the moment conditions. These moment conditions state that the regresses should be uncorrelated with the errors. Since she is a p-vector, the number of moment conditions is equal to the dimension of the parameter vector beta, and thus the system is exactly identified. This is the so-called classical GMM case, when the estimator does not depend on the choice of the weighting matrix. Note that the original strict exogeneity assumption E, epsilon I, she, equals zero implies a far richer set of moment conditions than stated above. In particular, this assumption implies that for any vector function f, the moment condition E, f epsilon I, equals zero will hold. However, it can be shown using the Gauss-Markov theorem that the optimal choice of function f is to take f equals x, which results in the moment equation posted above.